Hey guys, welcome back to another Managing 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to smoothly transition and glide your camera between third and first person. So I have already done a video on this, but it's kind of a little bit glitchy, it isn't great. So I'm going to be redoing it now and making this a lot better. So I'll show you what it's going to look like now. So if we hit play, we can see that we can move around and control the camera like normal. Then if we hit V, we're going to transition in. So we smoothly transitioned from third person to first person. We can move around and use this camera like normal as we'd want to. If we hit V again, it's going to transition all the way back out again. And this will work no matter where our camera is. It's always going to work perfectly. And we can't do it if we're falling so it doesn't break. And if we're moving, it's going to stop us from moving so that it doesn't break either. And then just let us carry on moving straight after. So I'll show you how to make this now. So what I'm going to do is just delete all this code and then we'll get right into it. So our first step is we want to open up our character blueprint. So mine's third person character. So I'm going to go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But this can be different for you, so it can be first, third, or whatever you've named it. Once we're in here, we're going to go straight up to the viewport here, and this is where we're going to create our different cameras. So as you can see, I already have my third person camera, which is there, so that's where I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that, Control C, Control V to duplicate it, and I've named it TPP camera, but yours might be follow camera. I've just got that for third person perspective camera. Then our duplicated one, we're going to drag and drop that onto the mesh to parent it to the mesh there. I'm just going to change this from TPP to FPP. A first person perspective camera like so and I've parented it onto the mesh as I want it to stick on the mesh as it's the first person so under the parent socket what I'm going to do is search for head and select that there meaning this will then stay parented to the head socket which is obviously what we want as is for a camera for our first person view so just move that where you want so I'm just going to put it just in front of the face and the head like that and then on this we're just going to tick use pawn control rotation there just so that this then moves with the player's mouse input so we can compile that and then the final step is we're just going to select the third person camera and we're just going to duplicate that again and i'm just going to call this one tpp ref so it's a reference to our third person camera and i'm just going to move that to be where that camera is so for me this is here you can just move it to the exact location like that so we compile that and go to the event graph. In here, what we want to do is just find some space. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to right click, get an event, begin play. If you've already used this, then hold on S, left click to get a sequence, plug that on there like that. Then zero will go into the code you have now. Then one will go into this new code that we're making. But I don't need that, so I'll to get rid of it. Out of this, what I'm going to do is get a reference to the third person camera, come out of this, and set active. And you get a reference by just dragging and dropping in from the top left, sorry and then plug that into the event begin play there. This new active, I'm going to tick so that this is true, and then I'll get a reference to the first person camera, drag out of that, and set active again, plugging that in there. This time I'm going to leave it unticked so it's false. This means that it's just going to set our player to be using the third person camera. Then out of this, I'm going to set use controller rotation your, and I'll just leave that unticked so we're not going to be using it like that. And this just means that when we begin the game, we're going to be starting in the third person perspective. So we can just compile and save that. Then after this, what we want to do is we want to go to edit, project settings. And once this is loaded, we're going to go down to input here. And we're going to do this so we can create an action mapping. So I already have mine here, but ignore that as you won't. So what we can do is you can hit the plus action mapping there. Name this to whatever you like. So for example, I named mine change perspective. And then select this here, which will say non and you can just choose the key that you want. So for example, I want mine to be V, as I want to use the V key to change cameras. So set this to the key input that you'd like to use. And the reason we're doing this is because we can use multiple keys, keys for different consoles, and we can also set up key bindings. So once you've done that, we can just close that like so, and find some more space in the event graph here, right click, and just search for what we named it. So I called it change perspective, like that. Then out of this, what I'm gonna do is just hold down B, left click to get a branch, and plug that into the pressed there condition of this what I'm going to do is get is falling out of the character movement like so and I'm also just going to disconnect that come out of the return value and just get a not boolean and then plug the condition of that into the condition of the branch so basically if the character is not falling we can do this as obviously if they've jumped or they are falling we don't want them to be able to change perspective as that will mess this up so if the character is not falling we're going to come out of true out of true what we're going to do is just going to disable the input with the target itself and the player controller as get player controller like so and then after this what we want to do is set the location of the first person camera 
So we're not actually going to be setting its location, sorry, we're going to be setting a variable with its location so that we can use it later on. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a reference to our first person camera in here, so FPP camera. I'm just going to drag out of that and detach from component. So detach from component like so, so we're going to get the actual location of this. The location rule is going to be keep world on all three of these. So keep world for location rule, rotation rule, and scale rule. And then out of the FPP camera again, what we're going to do is get relative transform like this. Then we're going to right click that return value and promote a variable and call this FPP transform. Like I say, this is so we can then use this variable later on. And the transform gives us the location, rotation, and scale. After this, we just want to attach it back to the component. So we're going to come out of the first person perspective camera again. And we're going to attach component to component like so. Plug that in there. Target is also our camera that we just got. The parent will be the mesh. So drag and drop a reference to the mesh in there and plug that into the parent like so. Socket name is going to be head. So all lowercase head like that as we then want to parent this back to the mesh like we have now. And then again, location rule, rotation rule and scale rule are all keep world like so with world simulated bodies ticked and also cool modify ticked on the detach from component. After this, what we want to do is come out of the execution node there and get a flip flop. And this is so that we can toggle between two values of A and B. Off of these, we want to set another variable. So we're going to hit the plus variable there, call this one to TPP question mark, leaving this as a Boolean. So it's a true or false value. Drag and drop that onto A to set it there. And we're going to set that one to false. Drag and drop it onto B to set it there as well. And we're going to set that one to true, so tick it. And this is because the first time we press it, we're going to first person. Second time we press it, we're going to third person. So then if we are going to go to first person, so this top one here, what we want to do is get a reference to the third person camera, come out of that and detach from component. So this is going to do the same thing we did a minute ago with the first person, except we're going to get the transform for the third person camera instead. So then again, we're going to come out of the camera after the detach. So also, sorry, keep world for these rules in the detach component as well. Come out of the camera, get relative transform, right click promote to variable tpp transform like so plugging that into the execution of the detach from component like that and that is that part done to get the location rotation scale of the camera so the transform off of the b so if we're going to third person what we want to do is just get this code that we got earlier so they set active here which are going to get that so set active the cameras select it control c Control V up here to paste it and just plug that into there like so with leaving these the same. So third person is active, first person is not active. So we are just setting to be third person. And then what we're to do is again, set the TPP transform. So drag and drop that onto there. And we're just gonna drag and drop a reference to our TPP camera reference in here. So just drag and drop that in there, TPP ref. Come out of this and we're going to get world transform. So get world transform like that and plug the return value into the set TPP transform like that. I'm just gonna move these out like so. And then after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a timeline. And the timeline is where we're going to actually do the smooth transition. So I'm just going to right click in, the, in between these and get an add timeline like so. I'm just going to call this one change perspective like so. Play from start is going to go into this top set there. Reverse from end will go into the bottom set like that. So this means when we're going into the first person, it's going to play this. When we're going to third person, it's going to reverse this. So it's going to do the opposite. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click this to open it up. And then the length here is how long you want this to take. So I want this to be one second, but you can set this to be whatever you like. That's just how long it will take for the cameras to transition. Then after you've set that, I'm going to hit the F there to add a float track. I'm going to call this one camera track. Doesn't matter. You don't even need to name it. And then on here, what I'm going to do is right click on the graph, add a key to curve float, time being zero, value being zero as well. Right click again, add another keyframe time being one or your full time. So the length that you set, that's where you're gonna put in this time value also being one. The value will be one anyway, that doesn't matter what the length is, the value will be one as it is at the end. So then press zoom to fit horizontal and vertical there to get this like so. And compile and just close the timeline there. So now you can see we have this camera track here. This is what we're gonna be using to transition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of that and we're going to get a lerp transform like so. So the camera track has gone into alpha there. So the alpha is going to be the value between the values of A and B, which we'll put in a minute. And it's getting that value from this camera track here as it's going between zero and one. And when it's going between zero and one, it's going to be going between A and B. A and B are going to be these locations we set earlier. So A is going to be TPP transform there. B will be FPP transform 
there like that. So it's going to be going between the third person and first person, and when it's reversing, it'll be going from first person to third person. And then what we want to do is actually, we want to be able to set the transform of this. So what we're going to do is get a reference to the third person perspective camera there, and we're going to set relative transform. So set relative transform, plug that to the update, which means it's going to do this every single time the timeline updates. So for every single keyframe in there. And then we can just plug the return value straight to the new transform there, but that's not what we want to do as we want to then mess about with the individual values as well. So we just alt left click on that to get rid of it. What we're going to do is right click the return value of the transform, split structure pin, right click the new transform of the set relative transform, split structure pin. And I'm just going to move this out a little bit. And then I'm also on the LARP transform, also going to right click the rotation, split structure pin again. Then we can just plug all these in. So actually I need to right click the rotation on the set transform as well, split structure pin. Then like I say, we can just plug all of these in like so, so that they're all in there like that. But the reason we split it is because we want to then set something else as well. So if we just compile and minimize this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new player controller. So if we right click, go to blueprint class, get the player controller there. I'm just gonna call this one my PC for my player controller, open that up. And up in the top right here, you get player camera manager class, select none, and then just hit player camera manager. Compile, save, that's all we need to do in there. This is just gonna allow us to move our first person camera rotation. So then what we want to do is, because we want to do that, we're gonna get a reference to our first person camera there. So get FPP camera. We're going to get world location. So get world location like that. Right click the return value, split structure pin. Then we're gonna right click up here. We're going to get player character. So get player controller, sorry. Get player controller, come out the return value and set control rotation. This allows us to rotate our camera. Plug that into the execution of the set relative transform there, like that, and I'll move all these down. What I'm gonna do is right click new rotation, split structure pin, put the X left as zero, the Y of this get world location and the Y there, and then the Z of this LARP transform into the Z like that. This is gonna allow us to smoothly transition the rotation of our first person camera as well, so that it doesn't stutter and it doesn't snap when we go back to first person. So that should work like that. If I just double click this line here, I'll get a reroute node so I can keep this nice and organized. And also made one tiny issue here. I've got get world location. That should be get world rotation, not location. I just read it wrong. So then if we split structure pin again, put the X as zero, the Y in there, this should now work perfectly. So then that is gonna smoothly transition our camera locations. So that it's gonna go from third location to the first location. But we're not actually gonna be changing the cameras, so this isn't finished yet. So what we want to do is out of the finished of this timeline, we're gonna drag out the finished, we're going to get a branch, so get a branch like that. The condition of this is gonna be our two TPP variable boolean that we made earlier. So plug that in there, out of true. So if we are going to third person, what we want to do is set use controller rotation your, I'm going to set that to be false and duplicate that, plug that into the false of this branch here and set it to be true. So if we're going to first person, we want to use controller rotation yaw. Then out of true, again, so out of true, set use controller rotation to false. What we want to do is reattach the third person camera to our camera boom. So to do that, we're going to get a reference to our third person camera there and also a reference to our camera boom. So just drag and drop them in. Out of the third person camera, we're going to come out of that and get attach component to component plug that into the set there of the execution and the parent is going to be the camera boom like that plug those in there socket name will leave as none these location rules again can be keep world so location rule rotation rule and scale rule keep world on all of those and tick world simulated bodies as well then out of the false so false set use controller rotation your to true we're going to set the cameras again so we come back over here copy these so copy those set cameras there select control c control v plug that into there like that this time we're going to switch them around so third person is false first person is true so we're going into the first person camera mode and then we're going to right click get player controller again get player controller come out of the return value of that and we're going to enable the input so as you remember at the start we disabled the input so the player can't move the player can't do anything to mess this up here we want to re-enable it so they can then move again so that doesn't go in the target that goes into the player controller target stays as self so that then plugs in there and then also the top one from attach component also goes into there as well so no matter which way they're going into third or first person the input will be re-enabled like that if we compile save this should be all the code done so if we go over this again i'll tell you what this is going to do so when we press our change perspective button which for me is v if we're not falling it's going to disable the input 
then it's going to detach the first person camera from its parents, which is the mesh. So we can then get the true raw transform of it, set that as our transform variable, and then reattach that camera to our mesh with a parent socket as head. Then the first time we press this, we're going to go to first person. So it's going to detach the third person camera from the camera boom, give us our raw location. Then we're going to go into the timeline to smoothly transition, which is then going to move our third person camera between the third and first person locations, and also setting the rotation of our camera. Then, because we're going to first person, what it's going to do is we're going to use controller rotation yaw, set the first person camera to be active, and re-enable our input. If we then press this again, what it's going to do, if we're not falling, it's going to do all of this again. This time we're going to come out of B, so we're going to third person, we'll set the third person camera back to active again, get the transform of our camera again, go into reverse, so this time it's going from first person to third person, again doing all of this the same way, setting the rotation and transform again, then, because we're now going to third person, it's going to set use controller rotation yaw to false, reattach our camera to our camera boom, and then re enable the input. So, again, compile, save. And then there's one small thing that we need to actually change as well first. Is if we come back over here just before the timeline, what we're doing is we're setting this transform here to this relative transform. But what we want to do is alt left click on there to disconnect it, get our TPP reference coming that we made, so drag and drop that in, come out of this and get relative transform and then plug that one into this set here instead. I just got that the wrong way around. I read TPP camera instead of TPP ref. So just plug that in like that. Now if we hit compile, save, and we try this, if we hit play. So if we get in, we can see that we can't actually move the camera. Now the reason that is, is because what it's doing is it's setting the third person perspective reference camera to be active instead of our third person camera, which obviously we don't want to happen. So all we need to do to fix that is come down to event begin play we have this code here, move the set use control rotation out, get a reference to our TPP camera, come out of that and just set active, plug that in there, and we want to leave that as unticked as well, so it's no longer active. Now I'm not sure why it is setting it to active, because it shouldn't be, but that should fix that issue. And because we did that, we'll also need to set this in the other places we've set these cameras as well. So if we just select that, control C, and then go up here, control V here, what we can do is just plug that into there, plug that in there, I just move it there. What I can do is then just select all this and just move it out to give it some space like that. Or just move that one out as well. And then all the way over at the end here, just control C, control V there, and plug that in, making sure we keep this as not active. And now this should also work a lot better. So we hit play. We have full control rotation of our camera again, so we can move it about as we normally should be able to. So we hit V can smoothly transition in so we're now in our first person camera like so if we hit v again smoothly transition all the way back out into third person so as you can see that works perfectly so no matter where this camera is if we hit v it's going to smoothly transition in if we hit v again it's going to smoothly transition out and this is going to work perfectly like so so it's a bit of a more complex code it's a bit longer this time but that's just because this is a bit of a more complex thing that we're trying to do so obviously if you mess one thing up, it's going to mess up a lot of other stuff as well. I just read stuff wrong, which is the only reason why it got messed up. I was reading my notes wrong. But like I say, I've already gone over and explained all of this, so you should know what it does. So I think that'll be for this video, so we've done everything we wanted to do. We've made it, so if we hit V, we can smoothly transition into first person. If we press V again, it's going to smoothly transition back out into third. So this is just instead of it snapping between the two or just simply toggling between the two, we can then toggle with a smooth transition going in and going out like so. And like I say, this is just an improvement of the previous video I made, which didn't work. And also if we're jumping, so we're falling, we press V, we're not going to be able to go in like that. We can only do it when we're not falling. And so obviously this just makes it look a lot better. And if you're running, you press V, you can't run, and then you can run as soon as it's finished like that. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.